Today I'm going to be showing you the best hidden features for the iPad. This is the complete list of the best tips, tricks, and hidden features that will allow you to use your iPad to its peak potential. Everything I'm going to be showing you in this video applies to any iPad running iOS 14. So let's get started with today's video, the best hidden features to use on your iPad. Everyone knows Apple Maps is great for driving directions, but what you may have not known is how much more it can do for certain popular locations, such as an airport. So if you go to Logan International Airport, yeah, you can get the driving directions there, but once you're inside, there's still so many great features on Apple Maps that you can still use. For example, you can check out all the different gates at your airport and then get walking directions to that gate. You're looking for a bathroom in the airport. You can search for restrooms, find out where all of the restrooms are in that airport. The same applies for the different food vendors they have, drinks, terminals, bag claim areas, as well as the different check-in areas. So any popular location like this, you'll be able to find these extra walking directions inside. Now for any of these, say gates, next time you're at the airport, pull out your boarding pass, find your gate, select it, now, if you hold down on that gate number right there, we can get the directions uh, to the walking directions to that location, but also we can share our location with somebody. So say you're trying to meet somebody at a busy place like the airport, you know, find a gate and then click share location. Now both of you can get walking directions to that location. Now I'm going to show you a quick trick that will allow you to get the most out of your Apple Maps application. So anytime you're looking at any location, I'm sure you've noticed that on the bottom right corner of the application is a little weather icon that gives you the temperature at that location. What you may have not known is you can actually press and hold down on this icon and it's going to reveal the entire weather forecast. What's really cool about this is if you switch the location and you look somewhere else, say Yellowstone, it's automatically going to update that weather icon, allowing you to check out that uh, weather forecast for that given location. This next hidden feature is an incredible shortcut for iMessages. So if you're ever sending text messages on your iPad and you wanna resend an old text message, rather than retyping out that same message, you can actually just grab it, drag it into your text box, and it's automatically going to paste that old message. So let me show you what I mean. Again, we're just gonna grab this text here, and you'll see you can just pull it over and drop it right in the text box like that. It repasted that exact same text. I can go ahead, click send, and not have to type that message out again. Now this is really cool because it doesn't just work for these texts. You can also do this with images and videos. It's super useful. Again, you just grab it, drag it over to that text box, and it's going to paste the exact message, whether it's a text message, a video, or a photo. Now I'm going to be showing you how to access multitasking mode, an incredible feature that takes advantage of our large display screen equipped on our iPad. So to access multitasking mode, we're gonna open up any application, so say the Stocks app, and now once inside, you're gonna need to know how to access your toolbar. So to do this, it doesn't matter if you're in this horizontal view or if you're using your iPad vertically, all we're gonna do is go to the bottom of our display screen and just slide up a little bit. And you'll see now I have access to this toolbar and all of my applications that I have put in this toolbar. So say I wanna open up Safari while using the Stocks app. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that application by holding down on it for a second, and then I can place it wherever I want on my display screen. So here we go. Hold this down for a second. Now I have grabbed it and I can place it on the left side or on the right side of my screen. You'll see it now split my display screen into both Safari and my Stocks application. When I use one, it's gonna run completely independently from my other one. So I can click on these different stories and it's not going to affect my Safari application. Of course, the same goes for the Safari app running on the right side of my screen. They run completely independently of each other. Now, if I want one of these apps to be uh, larger, uh, then the other, all we'll do is just grab this cursor in the middle of our screen and then just drag it over accordingly. Once I'm done using multitasking mode and I wanna close out of either of these apps, say I wanna get rid of the Stocks app and have Safari take up my full screen, all we're gonna do is grab that same cursor, 
and then just slide it all the way until it pushes the Socks app off of my screen. Now I'm just running Safari. It's an incredible feature. You can use it with any of your applications. And again, you just need to know that you gotta pull up this toolbar by swiping your finger up. Then you can grab any app and pull it into multitasking mode. Is there a certain website that you spend a lot of time on? If so, I'm gonna show you how you can actually save that to your home screen, just like an application. So once you're on a website that you wanna store on your home screen, we're just gonna press this button right here, open that menu up, then scroll down to where you find add to home screen. All we need to do is press that, click this add button, and now check this out. We now have that website stored right on our home screen, just like an application. Now anytime you open that up, it's gonna transport you right to that exact URL. I wanna take a quick break from our video to invite you to join this incredible application that's giving out millions of cash prizes just for answering quick and easy surveys. So if you wanna start earning real cash today just by taking these simple surveys, use the link in our, in our description or go to bit.ly slash getquickthoughts. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash G-E-T-Q-U-I-C-K-T-H-O-U-G-H-T-S. Now, using this link is going to help support our channel, but more importantly, it's going to make sure that you get access to their best surveys that pay out the greatest rewards. Now, using that link is going to take you directly to the App Store, and if you look down here, you can see just some examples of the incredible, easy and simple surveys that are paying out real cash rewards. So go ahead, download Quick Thoughts, and then on the bottom left corner, click Sign Up, and it's a really fast and easy process to get signed up for Quick Thoughts, and then right away, you're going to be able to start answering these surveys and being rewarded with real cash rewards. So again, the link's down in the description, or go to bit.ly slash getquickthoughts to start earning real cash for taking easy surveys today. Next, we have some really cool gestures for the Safari application. So anytime you wanna check out all the tabs that you have running, you're gonna take three fingers and just pinch inwards anywhere on the screen. And it's gonna take you to this view here where you can close out of any running tabs. Um, but when you wanna get back into, into the tabs, all you'll do is you'll pinch outwards. And you'll see it takes me right back inside. But what's important to note is to choose which tab you want to be taken to, it just is up to where you make that outward pinch. So if I want to go to the weather tab that I have open, I'm going to do the outward pinch right beneath that tab, and you'll see it will take me right to the weather page. If I want to go to App Find VIP, I'm going to do that outward pinch right beneath App Find VIP's tab. And of course, the same goes for the middle tab, Survey Junkie. If I do that outward pinch here, of course, I'm transported right there. It's a great gesture to know about and it is just an efficient way to check out uh, what you have open. And of course, if you do wanna get rid of any of these tabs and close them out, just click that X right there. Now I'm going to be showing you uh, the best gestures that I want you to know about so you can start using them on your iPad. So the first one is for when you're on your home screen and you wanna access your recently used applications, we're gonna take five fingers and just pinch inwards on the screen like so. So you'll see when I do this, it opens up uh, this uh, list view of recently used applications. So from here, if I select on any of these, it's going to bring me right to that app. And then I, from this application, I can use that same five finger pinch gesture to go back to this menu. If I wanna go back to the home screen, all we do is take a finger and tap anywhere on the screen and it will take us right back to the home screen. And the last thing I wanna point out about this menu is all of these recently used applications you're seeing here are actually actively running in the background of our iPad at all times until we close them out. So these apps are, you know, they are taking up some of our battery. Uh, so what we wanna do and get in the routine of doing is going to this menu and then just clearing out of these apps. So to close out any of them, we'll just take one finger, select the app and just swipe upwards, which is going to close out that app. So once you go ahead and get all of these closed, you don't need to worry about any applications, you know, taking up your battery life and running in the background. For the next one, I'm gonna open up our notes application to show you some typing gestures. 
Say you want to select one word in a sentence. All we're going to do is take a finger and double tap on the screen, and it's just going to select the word closest to your cursor. So ready? I'll do a one, two tap, and now that word is selected. Say I want to select the entire sentence. All we'll do is we'll take that same finger and then just do a three or triple tap. So one, two, three, and you'll see now the entire sentence is selected. Once I have something selected, say I want to copy it. What we're going to do is we're going to take three fingers and pinch inwards on the screen to copy that sentence. So again, three fingers, we'll just pinch and you'll see that it copied and cut that sentence. The reason why I cut it is because I'm going to repaste it now. Uh, and to repaste it, we're going to take the same, same three fingers, and instead of pinching inwards on the screen, we're going to pinch in an outwards motion. So you'll see right here, as I do that outwards pinch, it pasted what I had just copied and cut. Now I want to show you how we can undo and redo an action. So we take three fingers and then just swipe to the left. You'll see it undo. It didn't undo of that last action. Now, if I want to redo it, we'll take the same three fingers and just swipe to the right of the screen. And that's going to redo that action. So again, three fingers swipe to the left is undo, and then to the right is redo. Now, I want to show you some cool keyboard uh, gestures. So the first one is, you'll see above like all the letters on our standard keyboard are some special characters, like numbers, and then uh, different special characters like the at symbol or hashtag. To access any of these um, special characters. You can switch the keyboard tab, of course, by selecting this button. But a faster way to do this is to take, say you want to do a dollar sign. It's right above the D. We're just going to take a finger and then swipe down and you'll see it's actually going to select that special character. If I just selected the D, it's just going to type out D. But if I swipe down, again, it's going to select that special character. Now this next keyboard gesture is really cool and it's going to allow us to move our keyboard and use it anywhere on the screen. So if you want to access this special floating keyboard, we're going to take two fingers and we're just going to pinch inwards right on our keyboard. Just like that, and now we have this floating keyboard, which by taking a finger on the bottom corner of it, we can actually drag it and place it wherever we would like. And now we have this functional keyboard that we can use anywhere on our iPad. When you want to bring it back to that standard uh, full-size keyboard, we'll just do the same thing and pinch on it once again, except we're going to pinch outwards on it this time. You'll see when I was pinching inwards, it wasn't working. That's because the inward pinch will bring you to the small keyboard, and then an outward two-finger pinch will bring you back to that standard keyboard. Now, the last gesture I want to show you is one that's exclusive for you who have this Apple Pencil. So if you have an Apple Pencil, there's a really cool gesture that's going to allow us to take a screenshot. To do this, we're going to take our pencil and then just swipe diagonally from the bottom left corner of our screen, and it's going to capture a screenshot. So let me show you this. Take our pencil from the bottom left corner. We're just going to draw a diagonal line, and just like that, you'll see a screenshot is captured. Now we can also just go ahead and draw anywhere we'd like on the screenshot if you would like to, and then you can save that and it's gonna save these drawings that you just drew on there. Of course, to finish off a screenshot, you'll just click done, and then you have the option to save it to your photos or just go ahead and delete it. I wanna take a quick break to invite you to join AppFind VIP, our email newsletter where we're sending out the best mobile apps and mobile games to be sent directly to your email inbox. Now, either use the link in the description or go to appfindvip.com, and once you're entered on our email list, you're automatically going to be entered into AppFind giveaways, where we're giving out incredible gifts like iTunes gift cards and Google Play gift cards every single month. All you need to do is join our free email newsletter on appfindvip.com, and you'll automatically be entered into our monthly giveaways. We can't wait to see you inside. Go to appfindvip.com or use the link in the description to join AppFindVIP today. Now I'm going to show you how you can fully customize your home screen and app icon layouts just to your likings. So right now I have this set up in this bigger mode, which as you can see, my app icons are larger than the default layout that your iPad is set up on when you first take it out of its box. It's filling more of my screen and it's giving more spacing between each application. This layout, which is called Bigger, is only allowing me to put 20 applications on my home screen, whereas the default uh, setting allows you to put 30 applications. 
From both of these layout options, we have access to this today view, which I'm gonna talk about more in a little bit, and I'm gonna show you how you can customize this stack. But for now, I wanna show you how you can access this app icon layout uh, for your home screen. So to customize this home screen, we're gonna go into our settings application, and then select home screen and dock. So just as I said, we have two different options. We have the default option that's labeled more, and this is what that looks like. You'll see the application icons are much smaller now. Uh, it's not filling my entire screen, but it's going to allow me to add 30 applications per page on my home screen. So the other option is the one I had just had it set to. It's called bigger. And again, the only limitation is we can now only add 20 apps um, per, per page on our home screen. So once you have whichever one selected, I also wanna suggest you to turn on this today view. So when uh, activated and enabled, we have access uh, to this today uh, smart stack. And to get here, we just take a finger and swipe to the right on our home screen. So now we have all of these awesome widgets uh, like our calendar, weather, news stories, maps, and so many more. And if you ever wanna edit this, we're gonna scroll down to the bottom, select edit, whoops. Select edit, and now we can take away any of these just by selecting this minus button. And then you'll see it's gonna remove that screen time widget right from my stack. And if you wanna add in a new widget, at the top left corner of our display screen, just click this plus icon. And now you'll see you have access to all of these different incredible features that you can add to your stack. So we'll add uh, series suggestions. And to select that, you'll see we have a ton of different options on how you want this to appear on your stack. So I'm gonna select uh, this one, actually, we'll select this one, the largest view, which is gonna give me four different shortcut suggestions. And once I click this add button, it is now in my smart stack, and I can rearrange where it shows up on my stack just by grabbing it and then moving it accordingly to wherever I would like it to go. Again, if you wanna take away anything from this stack, we're just gonna click the minus icon and then select remove. Now, anytime you wanna leave the smart stack, you of course just swipe over to the left. And when you wanna go back to that stack, we'll swipe over uh, to the right. Back into our settings, the last thing I wanna show you is this multitasking. Um, I suggest you keep this turned on. This is how you can access that multitasking mode that we showed you earlier. By default, it will be on, but if you ever wanna shut it off, of course, you can go in here and then just disable these. And then the last thing is that I also suggest you have enabled is show suggested in recent apps in dock. So that's this toolbar right here. Again, you can access it when you're inside an application just by pulling up on it. But what this specific setting is talking about is the apps that show up on the right side of this toolbar or dock. So these three apps are either going to be your recently used applications or apps that Siri is suggesting that you use. So if your iPad picks up on you using, say your stocks app uh, rather frequently, it's going to suggest that application for you. So these apps on the right side of this line here are gonna be constantly changing and they're going to be recently used and suggested applications. I love that feature. If you wanna have it turned on, just leave this show suggested in recent apps and dock settings enabled. And of course, if you don't want that to happen, just select it and disable that setting. This next feature is on Apple Music. A lot of people already know about it, but I still just wanted to go over it just in case you don't, because it is a great shortcut and will help you find new music. So say you are listening to a song. The artist's name right beneath the song's name is actually clickable. And when you click that, you have the option to go directly to that artist or to the album. Again, it's a quick one. I just wanted to go over it just in case you didn't know. Anytime you're listening to any song, click the artist's name, and then you can get transported to the artist or to the album. I hope you enjoyed today's video. These were the best hidden features to use on your iPad so you can use your iPad to its peak potential. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite hidden feature was. And if you did enjoy this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more great content coming out soon. If you haven't already, make sure you sign up for our email newsletter, App Find VIP, by going to the link in the description or just going to appfindvip.com. Once you're on our newsletter, you're automatically gonna be entered into our app find giveaways. 
So thanks for watching today's video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.